Hey, what's up guys, it's Lobo here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be giving a whole retrospective on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. With the game's life cycle coming to an end and Black Ops 6 releasing soon, I wanna kinda just look back at Modern Warfare 3's development, its release, and its post-launch content, and really give my final thoughts on the game and give an opinion on if Modern Warfare 3 was an actual good game that got overshadowed by the hate and negative reception that Modern Warfare 2, the previous Call of Duty game, gave it. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So Modern Warfare 3's development and origin, it's honestly pretty interesting because if you look back at other Call of Duty YouTubers like Jev and people who make Call of Duty news videos and talk about Call of Duty rumors and leaks constantly, then you know that Modern Warfare 2 was supposed to be the first Call of Duty game to have a two year cycle. And for 2023, there would be no new Call of Duty game, but that did not happen. Infinity Ward did such a horrible job on Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 from the beta, the release of both, to the post-launch content for both, they did so poorly that this original two-year cycle plan was canceled and Infinity Ward and Activision actually forced Sledgehammer Games to stop making their own Call of Duty and make Modern Warfare 3 in under a couple months. I think Activision and Infinity Ward gave Sledgehammer Games eight to 10 months to make Modern Warfare 3 and told them to drop it in 2023. Sledgehammer complied and made Modern Warfare 3. And since Modern Warfare 3 was revealed and people actually were able to play the game, it was always going to be called a DLC version of Modern Warfare 2, but with movement. From the beginning of Modern Warfare 3's development to when it actually got released after the betas, the game was already filled with negativity around the game and the community was very split on if the game was actually good or not and worth the $70 you had to pay to get the game. When Modern Warfare 3 released and players were actually able to play it fully this time, a lot of the player base, including myself, enjoyed the game, but knew that this was Modern Warfare 2 repackaged into a $70 DLC. And we say this because Modern Warfare 2, all they had to do was add in and change a couple of movement settings from the timing and how fast they are and just change up the perk system and remove tuning. After the release of Modern Warfare 3, Sledgehammer and Games made constant updates to make Modern Warfare 3 better, balanced, and add old things back into Call of Duty. An example of this is looping killstreaks. Another thing was dead silence as a perk. And a final example I give is showing up on the radar without a suppressor. And since Modern Warfare 3 has been released, we've had multiple great seasons and updates that balance out the game and add new things that make the game exciting again. And I would say Modern Warfare 3 was already better than Modern Warfare 2 before and after season one the next thing i want to talk about is modern warfare 3's post-launch content and how much better it was than modern warfare 2. modern warfare 3 seasons have been absolutely amazing it's changed its focus to multiplayer to Warzone, and back and forth i do wish that sledgehammer games paid more attention to zombies but you can't really do anything about it now but modern warfare 3 seasons were always adding a new map new weapons new camo grind new aftermarket parts, new game modes especially. So I would say Modern Warfare 3's post-launch content with Seasons have been absolutely 10 times, honestly, much better than Modern Warfare 2. Additional thing with the post-launch content that Sledgehammer Games did was adding back old mechanics and things that made old Call of Duty good. Like I said, loopy kill streaks, but a bunch of old mechanics have come back into Call of Duty because of Sledgehammer Games listening to the community. Another great thing that Sledgehammer did great for Modern Warfare 3 was adding new variations of maps and game modes. The game modes that we've had are honestly really fun every season. And the new maps that we've been getting, we got new version of Shipment, new versions of Rust as well. And overall, we just have more variety within the maps rather than playing the same map over and over and over again. For Modern Warfare 2, we played on the rainy and dark cloudy Shipment the entire life cycle of the game but with modern warfare 3 we had that at first and they switched it up to ship miss and now with season 5 being out and sell ship being a thing we now have three versions of shipment we can play and one last thing before we move on i believe that sledgehammer's constant update to modern warfare 3's meta has also kept the game refreshing for modern warfare 2 infinity ward only cared about two weapons the vaznev and tac 56 the only meta changes that would actually happen was in Warzone. So now I'm going to be talking about is Modern Warfare 3 a good game or not? I'm going to be talking about comparing it to recent Call of Duties and comparing it to all time Call of Duties like Black Ops 2 and Modern Warfare 3, the original one. So is Modern Warfare 3 a good recent Call of Duty? And by recent, 
I mean in the last five years since this new era of movement Call of Duty with Modern Warfare 2019. So around 2019 to now. So comparing it to Modern Warfare 2019 and Black Ops Cold War, which are arguably, you can argue for both, which one is better than the other. But those two games are literally the first and second best Call of Duty games we've had in recent memory. I don't think Modern Warfare 3 is better and or as good as Modern Warfare 2019 and or Black Ops Cold War. In my opinion, I would say that Modern Warfare 3 only beats out Modern Warfare 2019's multiplayer, and that's really it. If you played Modern Warfare 2019, you understand how bad the spawn systems were and how toxic the player base was back then with shotguns, kill streaks, lethal tacticals, all that stuff. But let's compare Modern Warfare 3 to Call of Duty Vanguard and Modern Warfare 2. And let's just be honest with ourselves. Let's try not to beat around the bush. Modern Warfare 3 is better than Vanguard and Modern Warfare 2 combined. Modern Warfare 3's multiplayer, Warzone, and third mode being zombies are all better than Vanguard's modes and Modern Warfare 2's modes. With Vanguard, you had the campaign, multiplayer, Warzone, and zombies. Modern Warfare 3 does Warzone, multiplayer, and zombies better. For Modern Warfare 2, you have a solid campaign, bad multiplayer, bad Warzone, and DMZ is all right. The only thing that Vanguard and Modern Warfare 2 really have on Modern Warfare 3 is the campaign. But let's just be honest, all three games' campaigns are not memorable. Now let's talk about Modern Warfare 3 compared to all-time Call of Duties like Black Ops 2, OG Modern Warfare 3. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Modern Warfare 3 at best is like a C plus to a B minus. It's a mid game. All the changes that were made in Modern Warfare 3 from the horrible experience in Modern Warfare 2 should have never happened at all. And just because they made these changes does not make Activision and or Infinity Ward a better studio team. They decided to change something that was not good and that was not needed at all, which made Warzone and Call of Duty fall off for an entire year. And the fact that it took a $70 DLC to make these changes and to make the community quote unquote happy is absolutely ridiculous. If we're looking at old Call of Duty games that were sequels to each other, like Black Ops 1 to Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 2 to Black Ops 3 and or OG Modern Warfares, they all added on to what was already good. The only difference that you can really point out is that Black Ops 3 had jetpacks and Black Ops 2 did not. But either way, all three games, all sequels just built on to what the previous game had did right. So for example, Modern Warfare 2, what did that do right? OG Modern Warfare 2 from 2009 got map flow right, but it also got new tubes and one man army wrong. So what did Modern Warfare 3 do? It removed how overpowered new tubes were and one man army and balanced out the perks, but also kept the same quality of maps and the map flow. That is just one example of how back then the Call of Duties would literally just add on to each other and improve what needed to be fixed majorly. They wouldn't have a drastic change out of nowhere to the gameplay, to how the maps work, to anything, and then force another studio to make a new game and fix all their mistakes. So my opinion on Modern Warfare 3 comparing it to an all-time Call of Duty list, it's, it's like a C plus, B minus, it's mid as hell. In conclusion, Modern Warfare 3 is a game that was set to fail from the start, but in my opinion, overcame its struggles and hate by being updated consistently, having great post-launch content, and having better gameplay than Modern Warfare 2. All of these factors have helped Modern Warfare 3 better than what anyone expected it to be. And like I've just said, Modern Warfare 3 is a good recent COD game, but a solid and mid Call of Duty game all time. And I do want to say this though, Shout out to Sledgehammer Games, the developers, the leaders there, the people working there, because they did a great job with their situation. They literally were making a new Call of Duty. Maybe it was Advanced Warfare 2 or another World War game, but whatever it was, they might have had to scrap years to months of progress and development on this Call of Duty that we'll never get to make a Call of Duty that shouldn't have been made at all. I'm very excited to see what they put out next time when it's their time to make a Call of Duty game. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Let me know in the comments below what your guys' thoughts are. And if you guys are new, drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.